yeah, summer's winding down. The things I like to cook during the summer, I can continue to cook because where I live, I can grill outside year round. But there's just that feeling that it's just about changing into fall. And so I want to do some end of summer ribs. And part of that is making a homemade Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce. So we're gonna start on that first. So I have my saucepan out here on my induction burner and that's just so we can see it more easily without having to go over to the stove. And this is really a good base barbecue sauce recipe if you just take out the Dr. Pepper. You could eat it just like that or you can add an equivalent amount of your own favorite soda. You could use Coca-Cola, you could use 7-Up, you could use Sprite, Mountain Dew, I've used them all. And the base of our base is pretty traditional. It's ketchup, and we're starting with two and a half cups of ketchup. Everybody out of here, into our saucepan. Next comes half a cup of apple cider vinegar, and seven ounces of molasses. And if you've added molasses to anything, you know this might take a while. and scrape everybody out of your container here. Molasses really adds that sort of richness to barbecue sauce. A little bit of a thickener, but really it's, it gives it that sort of body. Let's punch up some sweetness in here with one and a half cups of brown sugar. I get asked a lot of times, well, is it light brown sugar or dark brown sugar when I'm making something like this? It's whatever I have on hand. I've never found there to be too much of a difference when you're making something like a barbecue sauce. There may be some recipes where that dark versus light brown sugar really matters, but it works either way for me. Now some of our dry spices, we've got a teaspoon of ground mustard, half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of cayenne, half a teaspoon of granulated garlic, and half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Finally, the star of this show, 24 ounces of Dr. Pepper. Let's mix this together in here before we get our heat going. Let those bubbles have a chance to settle down. And you could do this in a bigger pot. This is just about the right size for me though. I'll try not to splash any out. You can see we have a really nice color on this already. Now we're gonna fire up the burner and this is gonna go on a low to low medium heat. If you're doing it on a regular stove over a fire, same thing, you just want this to simmer. And when I turn on the induction burner, you might hear a little bit of a fan because it has a built-in fan. And we're just gonna let this go, let it start simmering. And we're gonna wanna stir this every few minutes, especially after it comes to a simmer. You don't want any of those sugars on the bottom burning. That's also why you wanna keep it at a lower heat. And once it starts simmering, we're gonna go for maybe 20 or 30 minutes just to let it reduce a little and blend all those flavors. And a whisk works really well in a pan like this to stir. You can use a wooden spoon. I've got one sitting by the side ready to go. And you're gonna to have to watch your heat, adjust your heat until you get that simmer and keep it there. You don't want it to boil, you don't want it to burn. So I'll just adjust this induction burner as we go along as it's necessary. So we've been going about 20 minutes now and you can see we've got that nice sort of sheen on the top here. Most of that foaming has gone away and we're just stirring every couple minutes. Wanna let it reduce a little bit more. See how thick it is. You can see right there it's starting to thicken but it's still pretty loose. If you want this really, really thick, you can just go longer and longer as you reduce it here. I just want it a little bit thicker. I'm gonna let this go probably about 10 more minutes. So we've been going just over half an hour and I think this is just right where I want it. I don't want a super thick barbecue sauce because this is gonna be used as a little bit of a glaze on our ribs and it's gonna thicken up a little more as it cools. So we're done with that. Now I'm gonna set this aside, let it cool. It's gonna go into a jar and refrigerate overnight because yeah, we're doing the ribs tomorrow. I do this all the time. I like to get as much done the day before as possible. And even with the ribs, you get that rub on there. You let that seasoning absorb in the refrigerator overnight. It's just the way I like to do it. So this is gonna cool down and we're gonna move on to our ribs. So as our barbecue sauce is cooling down and getting ready to go in the refrigerator, wanna get our baby back ribs rubbed. But there's a problem. Well, actually not a problem. We can deal with it, but take a look at these three. You see anything that doesn't quite fit? Each package was labeled 
baby back ribs or pork loin back ribs. Baby back? Baby back? St. Louis cut spare rib. It's not a baby back. If you flip it over, you can see this was cut from the spare right here. It's part of the skirt. So mislabeled in the cryovac, but it's a rib. It's gonna have probably a little bit of a different cook time. It's gonna go a little bit longer than the baby backs. At least that's what I've usually found. So we'll just have to adjust that. But let's go ahead and get these rubbed up. And today I'm using Uncle Steve's Shake Competition Pig Powder. So we're gonna get a good coating on everybody here. And I went ahead and removed the membranes because, well, didn't wanna do it on camera. That's kind of boring. I've done videos on that. In fact, I'll put a link to my removing a membrane video. If you really wanna see at least how I do it, there's different ways to do it, but once you get used to doing it, it's not that big a deal. And it's not 100% necessary. If you wanna leave the membrane on, go ahead. Sometimes I do. I just had the time here to do it. And I do like the end product when the membrane is off. Don't need a binder on any of these. There's plenty of surface moisture. We're just gonna give the backsides a quick little dusting. I'm not gonna worry about going really heavy on them. Do a little bit of quick surgery here. I don't want that little flappy tendony part on there. All right, that's looking good to me. I'm gonna cover this loosely with some plastic wrap. It's going back in the refrigerator overnight. And tomorrow, I'll see you outside at the grill. All right, the Lone Star Grill's offset is up to temp. I'm shooting for about 250 degrees today. It's at about 300 right now, but that's gonna settle down once we get these ribs on and those first couple logs of hickory that I put on start burning down. So let's go ahead and get these ribs on. Let me put my baby backs down here. And our fake baby back, AKA St. Louis cut, right next to them. Now I've got about a gallon in the water chamber in there. The cook chamber can hold water right in the bottom. Added that right at the beginning. And we're gonna let these go for about an hour and then I'll check, see if we need to spritz. All right, we've been going an hour. Let's take a look at our ribs. Those are looking good, but they are looking a little dry. Even with that water in the cook chamber, it's a very hot and very dry day today. So I'm gonna go ahead and spritz these. And for my spritz, I'm just using a 50-50 mix of water and apple cider vinegar. So we're gonna close this up and we'll check them again in another hour. All right, we've been going about two hours now, and this is about the point that I like to do what I like to call the flex test, and that's just to kind of get a gauge on how tender the ribs are. So let's do that. They're looking good. All right, so this is our St. Louis here at the front. Let's just take a quick little check here. I'm gonna pick it up from the center. It's got some good flex. One of our baby backs here. Very similar, and we're also getting some of the pullback on the bone, if you can see there. Let's get our back rack here. That one's got eh, slightly less. This is the perfect time right now for wrapping these. So I'm gonna go ahead and double wrap these in foil, give them a little bit of moisture, no sauce at this point. I'll sauce them when they come out of the foil and go back on the grill for a little bit of finish up time. Probably about 30 minutes at that time. The St. Louis, I'm not sure. That's probably gonna take a little longer, but we'll see. So let's go ahead and wrap these up. Hit it with a little spritz.
All right, I'm gonna close this up, let those go for an hour, then we'll open them up and sauce them. All right, we've been going three hours. Let's get these ribs unwrapped and sauced up. I'm gonna open up these baby backs first. Oh, those are looking really nice. A lot of pullback on the bones there. Oh, look at that. This one is super tender. That's gonna try and keep everything together here. We put it back on. Finally, our St. Louis. Let's turn those around a bit here. Yeah, those aren't looking bad. Might get lucky with those being done just about the same time. We've got the gardener next door, but it's time to glaze these. Give these a good brush here. Get our homemade Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce all over these ribs. All right, we're gonna let these go for about half an hour. They'll be done, and I'll see you inside. And here we go. Here is one of our racks of baby backs. I'm leaving one other rack over there and that St. Louis imposter rack. We're gonna stick with this one. We're gonna go with this, cut it up, see how we did. Three and a half hours, roughly total cook time, two hours to start, one hour in foil, and then about 30 minutes with the sauce on it just to tighten up. Brought it in, let it rest for about 15 minutes. It's looking really good, it smells great. So let's go ahead and cut into this. I'm gonna go right here. Let's pull a rib right out of the center there. That turned out great. Look at that juice. I am very, very pleased with that. Not a whole lot else to talk about here. Let's dive in. That's good. Hopefully you can see that. You see how it bites away from the bone? It doesn't fall apart. I've said many times, this is how I like ribs. I'm not a fall off the bone kind of guy. If you want these fall off the bone, I would say go about an hour and a half in foil. Then I think you'd be a lot closer to fall off the bone. But for me, this is the way I like it. A lot of nice layers of flavor here. A little bit of a savory rub, a little bit of a sweet sauce, and that wonderful hickory smoke on ribs. I really love hickory on ribs. The juiciness on this is just fantastic. There's not much better than spending part of a day sitting out by the smoker, making ribs that taste this good. It's just an all around great time.